We were having a great time in Milan. Stay tuned in this video to see the beautiful Last Supper painting and watch as we navigate the roof of the Milan Cathedral. We traveled here on the night jet train from Munich overnight in a sleeper compartment, which you can check out in one of our previous videos. We only had about 24 hours to see the city before our flight the next morning. Given the short amount of time available to us, we wanted to make sure we saw as much as possible. We had already seen some of the more iconic places in Milan, like the Gallery, the Milan Castle, Leonardo da Vinci's Vineyard, the Church of St. Maurice, and the Civic Archaeological Museum. Now we were moving on to some more sites, the first probably being the most famous piece of history here, The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. The Last Supper painting is located in the Santa Maria del Grazzi, tucked snugly away in the refectory of the covenant of that church to protect it from the elements. You do need tickets to visit the Last Supper, and it's always recommended to buy them online before you arrive. The tickets are released a few months ahead of time, and if you're planning to go on a holiday or weekend, they go fast. We actually went on a free Sunday. In Italy, every first Sunday of the month is a free day, meaning that you can visit all of the museums, archaeological parks, and state cultural sites for free. However, for many of these sites, you still need a ticket to reserve your time. Given that it was a free day, we had to get the tickets nearly two months in advance to make sure our spot was reserved, and we were glad we did. When we asked of the status of the tickets for that day, the worker at the ticket counter told us that the tickets had been sold out for nearly a month. With our tickets in hand, we waited for a bit in the plaza right outside the museum. So we're just sitting and waiting for our turn to go in and, and see the Last Supper. It was really hard to get these tickets, and it's a free Sunday as well, which is the first Sunday of every month. All the museums, apparently, in, in Italy are free, including this one. Um, so it was kind of difficult to get these tickets. Um, so yeah, we weren't going to risk losing our spot. So we got here 30 minutes early, went to the box office, collected our tickets that we bought online, and now we're just waiting uh, to go in. While we waited for our time slot, we decided to take a look at the church that stands here. The Last Supper painting is located in the convent portion of this church complex, but it is free to just walk through the Santa Maria del Grazi church whenever you want. The church is unique compared to many of the others that we've seen. It's built from brick and beautiful terracotta materials, and the low profile of the building makes the cylindrical tower pop above the skyline. The colors, rounded edges, detailed medallions, and sculptures make this a very inviting building to look at. The church was completed in 1497, around the same time that da Vinci was finishing his masterpiece nearby in the refectory building. The church is beautiful in its simplicity, and it was quite unlike any of the other churches we'd seen on our travels so far. Finally, our time had arrived. We made our way across the quaint little courtyard into the museum building. To be honest, the museum itself is quite sparse, but eventually we saw what we came here for. We went along the little corridor until we arrived at the air-sealed doors that protect the masterpiece. The first thing we noticed was how big the painting was. When it was commissioned, it was desired that the painting cover the entire end of the refectory hall, which was typical in those times. This meant that this painting ended up measuring about 15 by 29 feet. It was quite a spectacle to behold. There was plenty of information in the hall about the painting and how da Vinci managed to create such a work. The painting, as you might have guessed, was not completed all in one sitting. In fact, it's estimated that it took nearly four years to complete. To do this, the master used a method of painting in the fresco style, which unfortunately he was not that familiar with. Along with his unfamiliarity, as well as the fact that the church was built in haste and it was argued that the walls were not properly sealed, humidity and moisture slipped through and caused deterioration in the paint. In fact, after just 40 years, it was rumored that the painting was just a muddle of blots and that the figures were nearly unrecognizable. Thus began years of restorations and repaintings that have continued to this day. 
On the other wall of the refectory is another beautiful painting showing the crucifixion, which was painted in 1495 by one of da Vinci's contemporaries. As you leave the museum, you can see images of the painting throughout the last couple of centuries, and it's quite interesting to see how this space has been transformed through both times of peace and war. After getting our fill of the beautiful mural painted by one of the greatest masters of all time, we walked a bit further into the city, passing through the main square and the gallery. Make sure you check out our other video where we show you what we did there. We would come back to this square a little bit later, but right now we really needed a caffeine hit. After all, we didn't get much sleep on the train ride overnight, and it was starting to get a little bit late in the afternoon. We found a coffee shop, and got something to drink, and a little dessert. We had to stop for a little caffeine hit. We really didn't get a full night of sleep last night on the train, so... Nothing wrong with a little 3 p.m. coffee. But we couldn't just get coffee, so we got their take on tiramisu which is basically all of its components broken down and then we pour the coffee on it. Looks really good. Take a bite. I know you really can't tell, but not much time has passed since we got this and it is absolutely destroyed. We did good work. Yeah, I'm proud of myself. It was delicious though. It was so good. Right nearby the shop was another place we wanted to see. The Teatro alla Scala, or the Scala Theater. This place always shows up on lists of buildings to visit while in Milan, so we thought we'd give it a chance. To get in, you can either purchase a ticket for one of the many shows or concerts that takes place here each year, it is still a working theater after all, or you can purchase a ticket for a tour of the attached museum, which is what we did. Overall, the cost was about 15 euros to get in. The theater was built in 1778 and has hosted some of the most famous plays, operas, and musical acts throughout history. The museum showcases several of the instruments, costumes, and other items that have been used here throughout the years, and it's really quite a display. You can even go out into the main concert hall and take a look at a view from one of the boxes. The theater is a sea of red upholstery and it was amazing to look at. It really reminded us of the Palais Garnier in Paris. And the sheer number of boxes compared to the so-called cheap seats just showed the wealth of the people that would attend these shows. It was starting to near our time for the tour of the Milan Cathedral, which we were anxious to attend, so we started to make our way out of the theater. As seems to be much too common these days, we were interrupted on our journey by a line of police and protesters, which we let walk by without any protest ourselves. Our Italian is a bit rusty, so we never really found out what this protest was about. Finally, we made it back to the Cathedral Square. The Milan Cathedral stands as one of the tallest buildings in the city, and it towers over the square that it sits on. The inside was absolutely enormous. There was a mass going on in one part of the building while we were there, and the incense being used there actually made it look like the church had its own atmosphere and clouds. Even though the building is completely constructed from stone, it has a light and airy feeling inside. Of course, with such a large space, there were plenty of echoes and noises. We would not envy the churchgoers here when there's a crying baby in the audience. 
the cathedral, officially named the Metropolitan Cathedral Basilica of the Nativity of St. Mary, took nearly six centuries to complete. Building started in 1386, and the final pieces of construction were not finished until 1965. Of course, as the issue is with many of these churches, it came down to the money, and who was going to pay the additional construction costs. With a height of over 350 feet and a capacity of 40,000 people, this church is the largest in all of Italy. By gross volume, this church is actually the sixth largest church in the world. There were so many details in the stonework, paintings, stained glass windows, and statues that it was difficult to tell where to look at any given time. Everywhere your eyes went, there was something to see. After walking around the church for a bit, it was time for our tour of the roof of the cathedral. There are several different types of tickets offered to visit the cathedral, and knowing that the weather would be fairly decent given the time of year, we knew we had to get a ticket with access to the roof. We were not disappointed. We went up to the roof right at sunset, and my goodness, what a beautiful sunset it was. The architecture of the roof, with the drone of the city below, made it almost magical to be up there. We were amazed at the amount of detail on the roof. It was nearly the same amount of detail that we found inside the church. The buttresses were adorned with spires, statues, and artwork. There were several pillars that rise up out of the church, topped with statues of saints and other important people of the faith. There's even a gold Madonna statue on top of the cathedral. Well, we're up here on top of the cathedral. What yeah. do you think? It's awesome. It's yeah. really cool. Kind of treacherous, but uh, that's why they tell you not to wear heels, I guess. Perfect time of day to do this, too. The sun finished setting while we were up on the roof, so we made our way back down, but we were not quite finished with this cathedral yet. Sitting under this building are Roman ruins that were unearthed by accident when performing some work on the cathedral in the early 1900s. The site where the Duomo was built used to be the home to a church and a baptistry of the ancient Roman city. You can still see parts of the octagonal baptistry, which was actually used in 397 to baptize the prolific St. Augustine of Hippo. It was quite extraordinary to see this place as it once was, and it makes you wonder how many other ruins are under our feet that still haven't been unearthed. At this point, the sun had set, and we were quite tired from our long day. We made our way back to the hotel to get a good night of sleep before getting a glimpse of the city tomorrow. Breakfast time. So our 24 hours, well really 23 hours, in Milan has just come to an end. We're about to check out of the hotel, go to the airport, and then fly on to our next destination. But we had a great time here. We saw a lot in a short amount of time. We had some great food, good times. Um, overall, I think we, we really liked Milan. After breakfast, we headed to the station where we would get on our train to the airport. The connection to Milan Malpensa Airport from the central station is actually quite easy, which was nice after such a long day before. One thing we could not help but notice was just how beautiful the main train station was. We know Milan likes to do things big, and this station is no different, being the largest railway station by volume in all of Europe. 
The original station was built here in 1865, being expanded several times after that. As you might be able to tell, the original architect was actually French, and the station generally resembles Parisian architecture of the time. Inside the station, you'll find paintings, sculptures, and details that rival some of the best adorned railway stations anywhere in the world. We were glad that we had a chance to see this station as we left the city. We had an amazing time in Milan. Thanks to the short walking distances between major attractions and the well-aligned metro system, we were able to see a lot in a very short amount of time. It was also nice that the city was accessible to us in Germany through the night train system, making it quick and easy to get there without having to shell out 400 euros apiece for a flight. And yes, that is what they cost at this time. Milan is a beautiful city, and if you get a chance, you should check it out while you're in Italy. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one!